John the Baptist. We see Elijah as Jesus' client. Christianity believes Jesus was and is God, who was sacrificed as the unblemished Lamb of God for the sins of all who believed in him. And at this point in time, it was just Jews. And of course, Jesus was a Jew. For the sins of all who believed in him, and accept him uh, as their Savior, and that he did indeed rise from the dead. Just as unblemished lambs were sacrificed for sin in the animal atonement and worship laws of the book of Leviticus, God had his prophet Jeremiah write the new covenant with sin forgiveness. As a matter of fact, it is basically a covenant, uh, the first covenant uh, that was uh, brought by Moses and uh, it amends it. It amends it from being strict compliance to being mindful of the laws I gave Moses uh, for all the uh, Israelites at Oren. And there's the addition of sin forgiveness just as uh, God did for the Assyrian Babylonian exiles when they returned, making them a holy seed, and they built the second temple. So God had Jeremiah write sin forgiveness in a time to come. He had his prophet Isaiah Describe Elijah in Isaiah 53 and had his prophet Malachi write that the angel of the covenant that you desire is already coming and the messenger of that covenant is being sent to clear the way for the Lord. And that messenger is Elijah. You find this in Malachi. And I say Isaiah 53 describes Elijah. Well, he actually describes the righteous servant who makes the many righteous. But that is one of the tasks of Elijah in Malachi 3. To recounsel the family members one to another through Judaism and being mindful, mindful of those laws as opposed to strict compliance that the Israelites had to agree to with the first covenant. So basically it's just an amendment. It makes it new because it also uh, adds to it sin forgiveness. And that's in Jeremiah 31, I think verse 31, 31, 31. God says, I'm going to make a new covenant with you um, that will write tore upon your hearts and everyone will heed me. And then he says, for, because is what he's saying, because I'm going to forgive your sins and remember them no more. So it sounds like the covenant is some, whatever it means metaphorically to write Torah on your hearts. But what he's saying is, I'm going to forgive all your sins. And that will cause Torah to be written on your hearts. And ultimately... This, this sin forgiveness is going to have people return to Judaism, return to synagogue. It won't be everybody, of course, and he knows that, and he points it out in Malachi. So, as far as biblical characters are concerned, Isaiah 53 is about Elijah. But, of course, it actually describes a man in a time to come. Behold. I am sending my messenger to clear the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall come to his temple suddenly. As for the angel of the covenant that you desire, he is already coming. There's only two covenants left out there. The covenant of friendship um, that comes with David, Moshiach, and this covenant of sin forgiveness from Jeremiah 31, for a time to come. 
Jesus uses Malachi 3 verse 1 that I just read to describe his cousin John the Baptist to be Elijah. But he leaves out the angel of the covenant that you desire. The covenant of sin forgiveness. He doesn't mention it. It's left out. There are only two specific covenants to come in the day of the Lord. The new covenant of sin forgiveness must come with the angel of the covenant that you desire for the reason the covenant of friendship comes with God's servant David. That's what he calls him, a shepherd. Jesus said, this is he, John the Baptist, of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. And today, because the time to come is here, and I'm going to get to that. Uh, and that's why the sin beginning is here. God knew there would be no temple that he's going to come to suddenly. And we know he knew that because in the covenant of friendship is when he says, I will place my sanctuary among you. That's part of the covenant of friendship. So he knew it wasn't going to be built. So clearing the way for him is to clear the way to return to his temple suddenly. As soon as he as soon as it gets finished, I'll come right away. Okay, that's that, that's what clearing the way for him means, if you're wondering. Now, I don't know what John the Baptist was going to be clearing the way for, because the temple was there, and in fact, God was in it. Jesus is saying that John was clearing the way for, for Jesus as the Lord, as the Son of God, or God incarnate, and as a Renowned teacher of the scripture at synagogue as a young boy, Jesus knew that the Jewish people were without sin if John was Elijah. But he certainly didn't tell anybody. That is why he did not mention the angel of the covenant. He cannot die for the sins of the Jewish people if they are sin free. God forgives sin by his written word. And he's done it twice now. Not human sacrifice. He, he, he's not some asset or man God who accepts human sacrifice, much less committed. And, and Jesus says that. Jesus actually says, God has prepared my body as the final sacrifice for sin. He's prepared me for, uh, for sin sacrifice. And that's not in the Gospels, but it's in the New Testament. The time to come in the New Covenant is when, there's three uh, different parts of Jeremiah 31 in particular that start out, see a time is coming. See a time is coming. See a time is coming. And it's when, the, the first one is, when the land blooms again, when the Jews have returned to the desolate land after Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed by Rome and the Jews dispersed throughout the world. The land will bloom again. They're going to return. They're going, they're, going, they're going to clean it up. There'll be a planting of renown. See, a time is coming. The ruined city shall be restored. Again, Jeremiah, you know, God's having him write this knowing full well what Rome's going to do and what's going to happen. But that they would eventually return. And of course they did after the Holocaust and, and created Israel in 1948. And uh, it blooms again. It's beautiful. And the ruined cities have been restored. See a time is coming. Jerusalem shall be rebuilt. Uh, basically it gives some... Um, Biblical markers, but he's saying larger than it was in antiquity. And of course it is. It's a great metropolitan area. See a time is coming. I'm going to make the new covenant with you of sin forgiveness. Again, he knows the temple's going to be here. And just like with the Assyrian Babylonian exiles, the Jews today are a holy city. Because I bring that covenant. It's in the books. They just haven't gotten published yet. It'll be official. It'll be official when the books are published. 
And of course, that's the one I'm reading from. <clears throat> See, the time is coming. Well, what, what, what are we saying? Well, okay, the new covenant's here. How do we know? Well, somebody's got to deliver it. Who is that? It's Elijah, who clears the way for the Lord. Elijah was in heaven all this time. You know, this is kind of symbolic, but uh, he can talk to the angel of the covenant that you desire, who gives it to him, and then he announces it, which is what I'm doing right now. Two covenants to come. Elijah, the prophet like Moses, and the descendant of David. And of course, what were those people? They were righteous, and they were servants of God. But we also got the servant of God, the righteous servant, who's coming. So we got four men to look for. But we only got one description. Guess what? That one description is for the man who acts in the capacity of those three and in his capacity as God's righteous servant who makes the many righteous. Four righteous men, one description, and he had to have a description. The sages knew that. They called him the leper scholar, this descendant of David, because they said he is the man of Isaiah 11. And they had that right. You know, Jews for Judaism, Toby is saying, they, they, they try to preach and uh, teach that it's the Jewish people as one man Israel. And uh, just go read it. Go, go read how they try to back that up. It's laughable, if not ridiculous and absurd. And feel free to tell them I said so. Tell them Moshiach did. So, and oh, uh, on the sea of time is coming that Jerusalem shall be rebuilt. It says you will never be defeated and dispersed again. A time to come. And by what Malachi 3 is where he announces the day of the Lord. So when he's talking with Jeremiah, he's talking about his day. See the time is coming? That's the day of the Lord. And it's today. Because it blooms again, restores cities, Jerusalem of a great size. Now it's the new covenant. A sin forgiveness, and there's a temple to be built, and they're going to do it as a holy seed, just like the Assyrian Babylonian exiles. So this is the second time he's done this. A time to come when the Jewish people are never uprooted or overthrown again. Between 68 and 70 common era, the Jewish people revolted against Rome and were defeated, murdered, crucified, and forced to flee the lands of Abraham, beginning the diaspora, the Roman dispersal. The Jewish people were overthrown, uprooted after the death of John the Baptist. My point is this. If John the Baptist is Elijah, well then he's supposed to be announcing the covenant of sin forgiveness. But what happened? What happened? First of all, there was no temple to be built. And he never announced it. Jesus didn't announce it. See, the time is coming. Declares the Lord, when the city shall be rebuilt, for the Lord from these different markers. And that's Jeremiah 31, 38. John the Baptist couldn't be Elijah, period. And if he was Elijah, the greatest deceit of all time, that Jesus died for the sins of the Gentiles, for the, well, it was for the Jews, but um, uh, John, uh, told the Gentiles that, that God had left the Jew and was coming to the Gentile. That, so it all changed. Um, and, and, and God said it many times. I'm never going to leave you. I don't care if every one of you defies me. I will not leave you. Period. He doesn't leave me. So that was just a bunch of... Uh, so you got Jesus 
not pointing out that there's sin forgiveness for all Jews. Saying he's the man of Isaiah 53. He's saying John the Baptist is the man, the messenger of Elijah, described in Malachi 3 for the day of the Lord. And none of it applies. It's just all lies. Period. John the Baptist was not Elijah. To be Elijah, he had to be the righteous servant of God in 53. But Jesus claims that. Okay, so you say to yourself, okay, the new covenant is supposed to be here. Land blooms again, cities restored, Jerusalem, uh, a large metropolitan area, will never be defeated and dispersed again. Um, you go to Malachi 3, because that's the only other place a covenant other than the covenant of friendship is mentioned. So you know when these things happen, they, when they return from the dispersal, it's the time of the day of the Lord. Because that's where the angel of the covenant that you desire is. And it's today. So you should be looking for God's righteous servant. Elijah, prophet like Moses, the descendant of King David, and the righteous servant of Isaiah 53. And he acts in the capacity of all four. Okay. Well, there's John the Baptist. There's Jesus being deceptive, not telling everybody that uh, um, all the Jews are sin free, announcing that uh, God has prepared his body for uh, the final sacrifice for sin. And uh, none of it works. None of it works. None of it works. And the man of Isaiah 53 is a man of sorrows, suffering, familiar with disease, who God crushes with disease, but he's given on life. Well, that's just not Jesus, is it? He wasn't crushed with disease, and he certainly wasn't given long life. He didn't have children for him to see, which is part of that verse. Uh, it's, it, 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 it's human sacrifice. And Jesus says that himself. And God prepared his body for that. Okay. I just want everybody to know about that. And that the day is here. I am the righteous servant. I am Elijah. I am the prophet like Moses. I am the descendant of David. And guess what? God comes from Adam. And he's got to come with his representation. He's got to have a Moses. He's got to have a man to tell the people his words. You know, he's not just coming from Gentile lands of his own. Adam is, uh, means Gentile lands. Um, and it's often a, a reference to Christianity. It started with Rome. Is a Gentile. And I am a Gentile. I may or may not convert. God just doesn't tell me. I, you know, I'm not on the executive committee with him. And yet, I dwell with him. And I have for 13 years while he prepares me. Because I was an atheist for 50 years. Adamant about it. I did not believe in God. Period. And uh, so, I was a blank slate. A blank canvas. For him to teach me all these things and put this all together because Judaism has just fallen on its face. They don't know how to put this together. But it's the day of the Lord. They believe in the Messianic era. They, they, they don't even mention if Elijah doesn't get done what he's supposed to get done. When God comes, he's coming with utter destruction to the land. I have to be recognized. I have to clear the way for the third temple. And if I don't, bad things are going to happen in the Middle East to Israel someday. So this is all very important. There's 7 million uh, Jewish Israelis right now. Now when you start getting up to those numbers, you got to think about the Holocaust and the phrase, never forget. And that's all I have on this one.
I have uh, my next video coming up is is uh, has to do with signs and portents, and then the last one's on the new covenant again. I'm gonna go over that one more time because the Christians say the new covenant got changed. The new covenant is Jesus. He sent us Jesus, sin forgiveness, uh, as opposed to how it's really written. There's nothing in there about human sacrifice. Thank you for listening.